Do you have what it takes to be a boxer? Well, let's find out. I have a feeling the viewership on this video is gonna start off strong and then drop off real quick, but we'll see. So we're gonna be discussing what goes into a four week fight camp leading up to a fight. I'm gonna be referring to my notes here because we gotta stay organized. So as many of you know, Ricardo, who I've been working with for over two years now, is finally making his amateur boxing debut. So I thought I'd share with you how he's preparing to give you an idea of what goes into a boxer's fight camp, and then you can compare and decide if you could hang or not. So this is going to be a four week fight camp, uh, but we're gonna start five weeks out from the fight day. This way he has one week to focus on recovery and strategy. This way his mind and his body is at 100% top shape, peak condition, ready to go. All right, now that being said, I don't believe in fight camps in the sense of taking time off before or in between fights. Ricardo is always fight ready. We just ramp up his training to competition level five weeks out from the fight. So what I'm saying is you can't get ready for an amateur boxing match in five weeks time. You wouldn't even want to. You're gonna get smoked. Um, you probably won't even be able to get your registration in order and get your passbook in that time. Um, which by the way, I did just release an article on the Fight Tips Team Network. So if you remember on there, you can go on that article and it's step-by-step -step covers everything that you need to know, what you need to send in, how to register, getting your physical, uh, passport photos together, all of that so that you can get your amateur boxing book as a fighter and then I also break down on how to do it as a coach, all right? Uh, that being said, we are going to talk about when is a fighter actually ready for their first fight. But I don't really base it on an amount of time for when a fighter is ready so much as their level of skill. So the short answer on when is a fighter ready to make their amateur boxing debut is when coach says so. The long answer is when a fighter is able to listen and follow direction during hard sparring. The second is when a fighter is able to spar and hold their own or beat someone who has at least one win under their belt. And the third is when the fighter does their homework without reminders from coach. And that homework is road work, conditioning, studying, and recovery. The homework that I'm referring to here is in addition to the five boxing training sessions that we do per week. Now, before we get into the boxing training, let's quickly talk about the importance of road work or running. Uh, this is where I'm probably gonna lose about 95% of the viewers because so many people say they hate running, they don't do running. Um, but boxers should be running up to eight times per week. Up to eight times per week. Whenever I get a message from someone saying, Shane, I have my first fight coming up, any tips? I always stress the importance of building up their three energy systems, meaning their aerobic, anaerobic and ATP PC through running. You gotta be running. Speaking of, I also released an article on the Fight Tips Team Network. If you remember on there, you'll get access to the running road work regimen, which covers how to build these three energy systems through sprints, through intervals, through long distance running. And it's very specific down to the time, down to the length that you can build out through a weekly training schedule. All right. Um, again, if you're one of those people that doesn't do running, then you probably don't do boxing either. Can you build these energy systems with other exercises? Yes, but are you creating excuses to not go on these runs? Running's one of those things that everyone hates doing, but you gotta do the things that you're uncomfortable with. All right? How many people are still watching? Aha, the potential champs. All right, let's keep going then. Let's talk about the boxing training. So five days a week, we're going to be doing the following exercises. This is what Ricardo is doing to prepare for his fight. He'll get there 30 minutes early, so this doesn't even start yet, and he will stretch, he'll do a dynamic warm-up, he'll basically just loosen up. All right, so after 30 minutes of that, now training begins. 15 minutes of jumping rope, and this can be 15 minutes consecutively, or it can be broken down into three five-minute rounds. Followed by 15 minutes of shadow boxing. Again, it can be straight, consecutively, it can be broken into rounds. Three to five rounds of partner drills, or light sparring, or technical sparring, or isolated sparring, or sparring at a competition pace. Now, if you have questions about hard sparring, I'm not gonna talk about that in this video because I recently just did a video covering everything that you need to know about that. And then again, there's also an article on the Fight Tips Team Network on preventing CTE, which is a disease caused by trauma to the head. Um, so in that article, we talk about how to properly space out your hard sparring. We give alternative drills. Um, again, check out the video, I'll have the link down below. And if you want the access to the article, which goes even more in depth, again, sign up for the Fight Tips Team Network. All right, then from there, we got three to five rounds on the heavy bag, another push to the Fight Tips Team Network. We just released a heavy bag courses on there, boxing specifically and kickboxing, that's uh, for premium members. 
Then from there you go to three to five rounds of mitt work. And with all of these rounds that I'm talking about here, it's gonna be two to five minutes, all right? Then we got one to three rounds of shadow boxing, again, even after your mitt work. Now in these last one to three rounds of shadow boxing, this is where you can mix in your calisthenics or your weights, um, but then we taper off as the fight gets closer to ensure that the muscles recover back to 100% in time for the fight, right? Because when you're lifting, when you're doing crazy sprints, when you're doing your calisthenics, this is how you're going to, this is, this is what breaks down muscle, and then it takes time for the muscle to regrow back to 100%. You don't wanna be sore, you don't wanna be recovering in time for the fight, you wanna be at 100%, all right? So this tapers off about a week out from the fight. Then from there, we'll do five minutes of hand-eye coordination drills. This could be things with tennis balls, this could be um, head movement drills, this could be double end bag, this could be slipping on a slip rope or, or a slip bag. Again, something that's going to work uh, the visual uh, and that connection from the eyes to the hands to the feet, the timing and the rhythm. Then it's cool down and stretch and breath work. All right, so it's about two hours of training and you're doing that five days a week on top of the homework, on top of the road work, on top of the recovery when you're going home and you're watching and studying the legends of boxing and you're foam rolling or you're rolling out on a lacrosse ball. So all of this, you know, often it's, it's two times a day that you're training. All right, so this is what goes into it. This is what Ricardo's been doing. Again, it's, it's very systematic. Um, it's, a, it's a balance of training hard, recovering hard, um, staying hydrated, and, uh, and we didn't even talk about that. We didn't even talk about water loading, but I'll have a link down below on, uh, on cutting weight and that type of thing. All right, so that's basically what goes into it. Well, that's, that's a portion of it. We didn't even talk about the mental side. We didn't talk about the, the dieting. We didn't talk about uh, committing committing the time to all this. But again, it's uh, it's one of those things where when a lot of people watch a boxing match, they're like, I can get in there and do that. And it's like, all right, well, here's what you gotta do. And usually when you break it down, usually when the word road work or running comes up, that's when they're like, ah, actually, I, uh, I got a thing I gotta do. <laughs> so thanks for tuning in, guys. Uh, I know a lot of information in this video. Um, but hopefully it answers your question. Hopefully a lot of people are, uh, are excited by it. And uh, please join the Fight Tips Team Network. Um, like I said, there's a lot of really great resources on there. Um, a lot of great fighters on there. It's a very positive community on there. No trolls, no negativity. We'll never sell your information. There's never gonna be any ads or anything like that, okay? Um, a lot of people ask, how can I train with you, especially now that you're out in Pennsylvania? Um, and with all the, the traveling that I'm doing, it's hard for me to commit to anyone, but I will say this, that if I see people who are very serious about their training um, and really wanna take uh, their competition to the next level, and even if it's just getting started, like I said, Ricardo still hasn't even competed yet, um, as long as you're dedicated, I'm gonna keep an eye out on the Fight Tips Team Network. And we have a feature on there where we can see people who are in your area. So if you're nearby me, you're in the Pennsylvania area, the Jersey area, the Delaware area, and uh, I see that you're keeping up with your training, that you're serious about it, I'll reach out, all right? So there's one way of, uh, of training with me. But until next time, I'll see you on the Fight Tips Team Network, or I'll see you down in the comment section. I'm Shane with Fight Tips for the underdogs.